And as I said, the day's lesson, which could be the source of the blockage because so many people are dealing with some form of depression, anxiety, or fear. And you can't seem to understand why is it a stronghold? Why does it seem to come back and torment you every single day? What is it about all this that seems to keep trying to steal your joy? How do you how do you combat that? I just want to give you these scriptures that for the day. I'll be putting all the scriptures on this lesson under the screen. Uh, but mainly I want to give you Jeremiah 29, 11 through 14. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and I will, and I, and, and excuse me, then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. I will be found by you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back from your captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you, says the Lord, and I will bring you to a place from which I caused you to be carried away captive. Of course, there's always the one we always talk about, Isaiah 55, 8 through 9, my thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways are not your ways. As far as the heavens are above the earth, so are my ways higher than your thoughts, and my ways above your ways. And then I will share several of those four of the scriptures I want to share. They really are, are, are scriptures to hold on to when you're feeling disappointed. Because really, the base of disappointments is what feeds depression. When you're expecting someone to act a certain way, you're at work, you, ex you expect it to be uh, shown gratitude for all that you, your hard work, or your friends, or your family. In any, in any situation where you're expecting some sort of a gratitude for your efforts, or for your work, or for your, the time you put in. See, those are all things, when you don't get that back, that feed the source of depression. Because if you spend hours and hours of doing this or that, you think you're trying to please someone, or you're working hard, try to do what the boss says. You're trying to please a friend. You're trying to please a family member. But you're expecting some kind of return. I mean, it doesn't have to be like, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Just give me a hint that you appreciate what I'm doing. But when you don't get that, here comes the devil. See, they don't appreciate nothing you're doing. Matter of fact, what you're doing is worthless. You're worthless. See, all these lies come into your head because you're not understanding because what? We're looking at the world now. When you're expecting return, you're looking at the world. And that's something we have to always remember when Jesus said himself, if you're being hated by the world, or uh, paraphrasing, mistreated, includes hated, then remember, they, they hated him first. And we're following the one who was hated first. So when we're looking at the world, we cannot expect the world to give us what it cannot provide. It cannot give us praise or thank. It doesn't care about our joy. It doesn't care about our peace. It doesn't care about our hope. The things we cherish in our spirit, the world can't provide it. That's why we always remember we're in the world, but we're not of the world. We can't not expect the world to behave in a spiritual way, which of course, as followers of Christ, we lift each other up. <clears throat> we pray for one another. We, we, our, our camaraderie and, and, and fellowship together, we support one another. That's why fellowship is so important. Because when we leave the fellowship, we go back into the world who hates us. <laughs> and so we can't expect the world to give us joy. We can't expect the world to feed our joy. And that's what the unfulfilled expectations is all about. We're expecting the world to give us something back that is not designed to provide. And that's why I said, when you're doing something for the Lord, or you're doing anything as a favor, or you're giving your time, you're volunteering, you're doing something for a friend, you cannot expect something back because they're not designed to give anything back. They may, if they're not coming from the godly point of view of God is love, God is support, God is help, if they're not coming from that point of view, they cannot provide what you're looking for. 
That's only what, that, that's why fellowship is so important. That's why so many of you come to fellowship and say, wow, I don't feel this, this love. I don't feel this, this family feeling I feel in the fellowship outside the fellowship because the world is in charge. And if you keep looking at the world, you will stay in depression. You will stay in fear because the world does not provide anything to give us peace of mind. It doesn't give anything to make us feel confident. Matter of fact, you look at the world, all you see is chaos, violence, perversions, blasphemy. I mean, we literally feel like Lot in Sodom <laughs> when, when, when the uh, angels came and said, get your family and get out of here. And Lot took his family and ran from that city because they said, we're about to destroy the city. But until they came, he was in Sodom, but he wasn't a part of Sodom, in the world, but not of it. So we're going to see all this stuff around us that can depress us. It can cause fear. It can cause depression, anxiety, all kinds of physical ulcers, high blood pressure. All those are stress-related. And the more you look at the world, the more you're feeding those negative symptoms, which manifest in the body. Amen? And that's, what the, the, that's why... Part, part, Probably the the devil works so hard to try to block this message today because so many people are battling with depression daily when they first wake up. And that's why we have to keep our eyes stayed on him. We're keeping our eyes stayed on him. Keeping our eyes stayed on him. That is the key. And that's just what I want to leave you with on this brief message today. I will leave other scriptures under the video so that you can meditate on them as well but remember it's all about giving and not expecting anything back if you give and work hard even if you're at the job someone gets hired above you that you should you should have gotten that job someone gets hired above you now you got to train the person who sh who has a job that you deserve to have that's it feels like a slap in the face but it's still the devil trying to steal your joy you see god sees all this don't think god does not see all this and you will be rewarded for your patience and you're keeping your eyes on him in the midst of what doesn't seem fair, in the midst of chaos, in the midst of total unfairness all around you. Keep your eyes stayed on him because he knows what's going on. And you just keep doing, do what you do best. Keep doing it for the Lord and you keep your peace. And next thing you know, he's going to reward, reward that peace and give you some peace of mind to give you the, the, the feeling of worth that you need to have, but know that you have it. But God does not take away your worth. God knows what you're worth. It's man who insults you, man who ridicules you, man who lies, man who backstabs, man who gossips, man who causes all the seeds to be planted in our ears that can cause depression. We got to go wave, wave, wave my window. Devil, go wave my window. Get out of my ears in the name of Jesus. Get out of my ears because you ain't getting nothing here, devil. You're not getting nothing here. And that's what this whole lesson is all about. We're not going to let anything steal our joy. Anything steal our peace. Because we know God's got our back. We've been given authority to trample over all the power. Depression, anxiety, fear. All those are attempting to act like they've got power. That's because we're listening to them. But we don't look at things that are seen. We look at things that are unseen. Things that are seen are temporary. But things that are unseen are eternal. Thank you, Jesus. And that's what we hold on to. We hold on to those things. The things that are unseen are eternal. And one day, they're going to replace all this chaos that we see. And then the goodness of the Lord should be manifested in our life. And that we'll be able to walk in the blessings and the manifestations of of our prayers to be delivered from all this anxiety and fear. Amen. I love you guys. We love the Lord. Thank you for being patient and being with me this day of chaos. But it's not day of chaos because what? We still got to praise. We still got to fellowship. Sing, sing, email. I was in location in the praise mobile in transit. We still got a praise on. And we still have the joy of the Lord. And we still got a message for the day.